under the blood. Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, I want you to get ready and uh, turn with us. It might be, it sounds good. I mean, I'm getting a volume, but it's just a little echoish. But if we can't, we ain't going to worry about it. If you have your Bibles, I want you to get ready and uh, turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. But remember, let's be alert for what's happening in America, in our nation, in the world today. So we can um, be informed to know how to pray about these things. Well, how many of y'all heard what happened this week about um, Donald Trump? Huh? How many of y'all, let me see your hand if you heard about what happened to him. What the rest of it, where you been? And, uh, I try to be selective when I say it because I know things are online. So I try to be selective and be careful because they kick me off of Facebook two or three times. You know, but I can't suppress the truth. And uh, we're going to um, finally go through some pretty rough times. We better pray that God haven't turned his back on America with what is being allowed by the communists. Y'all call them Democrats, but I call them communists. The communist regime taking this nation over. And they got a pup, puppet in the White House. And uh, he don't have way to know what he's with anyway. Oh, our nation has never been in the time of darkness like it's in right now. We've never had such a... I, I, and, and we're in a crisis. And I'm trying to, like I say, I'm trying to limit what I say. But I'm telling you, America needs help. We need God to Put the right man in the White House. Somebody that can help us because the sharks are smelling blood. What I mean by that, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, and some of these other countries, they are smelling blood. I don't know if y'all heard about it, but Russia... Y'all remember um, um, a few of y'all, Brother Chuck and Sister Gretchen, um, Brother, I don't know if Brother Ephraim was around back then, Sister Sharon, Brother uh, Steve, the other Sister Tam. I'm pretty sure y'all remember Brother Chuck saw a war and he saw something like Star Wars. He saw missiles in space and being uh, pointed toward our cities. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. Some missiles in space. Yep. And right now Russia has launched a weapon that can take out all of our nuclear, all of our uh, satellites. Mm -hmm. You know, take, I don't know all of them, I don't know the full details. And we tried to launch something today, but uh, they're going to try again tomorrow. There's something going on that we're not being told. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we tried to launch something today in space. But they have launched something. They just said if, if it's successful, there won't be um, very little defense against it. And we'll be helpless. 
And right now, you know, when, 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 man, no, I'm telling you, this man, I say him, but it's, he's a puppet, but it's the ones behind him, the communist regime that's in the White House now. Like I say, I don't call them Democrats, I call them the communist fool, communist. Because the tactics and the way they're doing things is um got the press got the the Trump mm -hmm. right now. Yep. Got um Trump put in a gag mm -hmm. where he can't speak, he can't defend himself. Mm -hmm. And there's devil that's up there, that judge. Yep. We better pray. That's right. That and I believe if people pray God will send this thing to the Supreme Court and and throw this thing out. And stop it. Because I'm telling you, you think people complain now about the uh, uh, borders, no restriction in the borders. They bring them in from all these other countries. A lot of these other countries, their uh, crime rate has dropped. Why? Because they sent them to America. They've emptied their prisons. They've emptied their insane asylums. Mm -hmm. They're emptying all these bad people from all these countries and they flood America with them. Mm -hmm. And you got some right here, right here in Joplin. Mm -hmm. Somebody come to one of our saints. That sounds better. Somebody come to one of our saints and said, oh, uh, this real bad bunch that from south of the border that uh, one of the worst gang type uh, what, what's the name of these people that cut your throat, cut your head off? Huh? The, the cartels? The worst of all of them. So some of them is right here in John. And somebody came to one of our um, one of the members and said, if they don't need protection, let me know, I'll come kill them. <laughs> That's how bad things are getting. Oh, yes. Remember last Saturday, mm -hmm. I was preaching the message on being hidden in a time of trouble. Mm -hmm. And I gave y'all scriptures on being hidden. Years ago, Brother Tell song. These people coming from south of the border and coming from north of the border and he saw them coming in but he saw God's people was in areas where God had assigned for them to be and when these bad people came in our country he saw that God's people was being kept that, that uh, uh, they were, these bad people was God blinded them to where we was at. That's why you need to keep your mouth shut. Don't be telling everybody all your business. Right. Tell right. everybody this and that about you. Right. There's enough out there on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But learn how to don't let your left hand know what your right hand doing or where your right hand stay. Mm -hmm. Sir. You got 15 million people that's coming to this world now, and this nation now, that from other countries, from over 167 countries, and more. And right now, Russia is threatening with nuclear. And you watch it. They will attack America with some nuclear weapons. America, some of our cities, We'll be attacked. That's why God's trying to get us. That's why God years ago told us yes. about places that He was going to have. There was going to be a house, places of refuge, places of shelter, places where we're going to be kept right. in the time of trouble. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm telling you, walk softly. Pray for your nation. Pray, God, get these evil folks out of this here White House. With the right ones in there. Y'all see how they blackball 
the past president. And so many people are so blinded. There's no way I vote. I will not cast my vote for a president that's pushing LGBTQ, that's pushing abortion, that's pushing all these, you know, evil policies that this president is pushing. And if you vote for them, then you're partaker of that evil. I know people don't, especially black folk, they don't like me saying that because they born Democrats going to die Democrat. But I'm born Democrat, but they ain't going to die a fool. I'm going to base my voting and my prayers according to the word. And when I see what somebody is not going according to the word, I don't care, you know, I don't care if your mama voted, if your grandmama voted. When, when, when that party goes astray from the word, then you continue to vote for them because of your traditional background. You, you, you're not um, following God. You're following, you know, man. But anyway, I was thinking, you know, how, how bad when you can let a state do what they've done to a former president and blackball him and all this evil that they're doing to um, former president Reagan. I mean, uh, not Reagan, but um, Donald Trump. They're blackballing him. And y'all better pray for him because he's standing in the way of them giving to you. He's fighting for you. Biden ain't fighting for you. That man caused more trouble. He's done more wicked than any president we've ever had. And I'm not going into politics, but I'm just letting you know you better pray. God get this bunch out of there. Right. Put the right one that, that, that he wants in there. Mm -hmm. That's right. I remember back in 19 and 1974 when there was a minister, I mean there was a president in the White House and uh, he was the one that God wanted in there but because of the Watergate and because of um, scandals. Mm -hmm. He had to resign on October, the, I mean, in August the 8th, 1974. Mm -hmm. And he had to resign. The first president, I think, that I can think of, that ever had to resign. But it was a bad, it was a dark day in America. Yep. Right. When this particular president, and I'm not going to call his name, but when he resigned, it was a dark day. And I remember my wife and I, we was at a meeting with Brother Terrell, and he had 5,000 people there in 1974, and on August the 8th, when we got that bad news about what happened, similar to what we heard this week. And, uh, but this week is much more worse. But y'all are blind and you can't see them. Um, a lot of people are blind, they can't see what's happening in the White House and what's happening with this communist regime that's in the White House. I don't care if they don't like it. God said the communists were going to come in, going to take over. And that's what's happening. But there was a scripture that was given to us in 1974 that comforted us that let us know that God was in control. And that scripture is over here in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. 
And uh, verse 25 through 28. Hebrews 12, verse 25 through 28. See that you refuse not him. See that you refuse not him. That speaketh. That speaketh from heaven. Uh -huh. For if they escape not, who refuse him that spake on earth. Yes. Much more shall we, shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Yes. Whose voice then shook the earth. Uh huh. But now hath promised. Now God has promised. Saying yet once more. One more time. I will shake not the earth only. I'm going to bring a shaking. And that's what happened this week. A shaking. That's right. This man, if he remained in the White House, America's gone. America's standing, you know, on, on, on a three right now. America is just on the edge right now of collapsing. We've been collapsing for the past three and a half years. And she's on the edge of collapsing. That's right. And if she goes down, you better pray, you better pray, you better pray. Some people are have eyes to see, but they can't see. They have ears to hear, but they can't hear. They don't know that the end is upon us. The end, the end is upon them. Not just America, but the whole world. Finish reading it. I shake not the earth only. I shake not the earth only. But also heaven. But also heaven. And this word. And this word. Yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken. Everything that can be. Everything that ain't on the foundation. Everything that's not according to the word. And every person does not establish and built upon the word. Or religion. Or whatever. Anything. Whatever it is. If it's not built on this word. It's going to be shook. If you're not built on it. You're going to be shook. Go ahead. As of the things that are that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken the, uh -huh. may, may remain. There's some things that can't be shaken. And that's what you better get your get established in. What the things which can't be I know one thing that can't be shook, that's the word. Mm -hmm. that's right. Go ahead. Wherefore, uh -huh. we receiving a kingdom. We re now listen to this. Wherefore, we're receiving a kingdom. Which cannot be moved. A kingdom which can't be shaken. Which cannot be moved. Let us have grace. Let us have grace. Whereby we may serve God acceptably. God have been a prince to come into this kingdom that can't be shaken. That can't be moved. Man will be shaken. Presidents will be shaken. Governors will be shaken. Everything. God said it's, that can be shaken. It's going to be shaken. But there is a kingdom that he spoke to us about in the book of Daniel that can be shaken. Hallelujah. And in the book of Romans chapter 8, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations, shall things present, or things to come? I'm persuaded that none of these things, we need a foundation that can be shaken. And to have that, We've got to have a faith that can't be shaken. We've got to have, we've got to be established in a faith that cannot be shaken, regardless of what the government does, regardless of what man out there does. We need to make sure that we are not, that, that we don't have misplaced faith. Preach message on that. I'm preaching several messages on misplaced faith. People putting their faith in money. That's misplaced faith. <laughs> People put, putting their faith in man. Huh? Uh-uh. People put, putting their faith in religions. That's misplaced faith. Put your faith in uh, something that can be shaken. It's misplaced faith. You can't put your faith in even in the doctors. Even in the medical world. 
Your faith has got to be, it's going to be tried by fire. And your faith has got to be uh, rooted, grounded, and established in something that can't be shaken. Especially now. Amen. Mm -hmm. If that government falls, you, you've got to make sure your faith is, is in the right place. If everything around you crumbles, you've got to make sure your faith is in the right place. Are you listening? And when Nixon, that's who it was, when he um, resided in 1974, August the 8th, I was at, my wife and I was at that big meeting. Brother Trey had about 5,000 people in that big tent. And um, that's, everybody was sad and troubled. But then the word of the Lord came to us. We have a kingdom which cannot be shaken. And boy, that gave us the grit. That gave us confidence. Gave us what we needed to get through that crisis. Right now, people are shaken because they're seeing what's happening in the White House. They're seeing what's happening and they're being shaken. And we need to take comfort from that scripture. Read that scripture again. Wherefore, well, we receive a kingdom. We receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. Which cannot be moved. Let us have grace. Let us have grace. Whereby we may serve God. That we might serve God. Acceptably. See, when you come to God, present yourself to Him. Acceptably. Live in sanctified. You know, God just don't accept. He don't accept us anything. Your prayer got to be accepted. Your offering has to be accepted. The life that you live has to be accepted. Present yourself to God a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, approved. Huh? Go ahead. With reverence. With reverence. And godly fear. And godly fear. For our God. For our God. Is a consuming fire. Is a consuming fire. I'll preach the message on the fear of God. Go back and get that message. On the fear of God. And we're going to have to have it. God won't get it. Let's read over here in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Get that, Brother James. Sister Gretchen, you can get 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 5. And uh, Brother Israel, you can go back to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. But over here in 2 Corinthians Chapter 13 and verse 5. Examine yourselves. Examine yourself. Whether ye you be in the faith. See if you uh, see if you're in the faith. See if you're even saved. Mm -hmm. See if you're under the blood, if you're under the grace of God. Examine. Some people are, you know, going by uh, religion and going by things that is going to be shaken. But you better examine and see if you're in something that unmovable, that's rooted, that's grounded, that can't be moved. Examine yourself. Uh-huh. Whether you be in the faith. See if you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. Yes. How that Jesus Christ is in you. Uh-huh. Except you be reprobates. Lord, help me to... Is that reprobate? Is that the end of that scripture? See if you'll be in the faith. Or see if you'll be an unbeliever. Jesus. That makes you want to really examine yourself. Lord, am I saved? Am I going to heaven or hell? Am I on that straight road that leads to heaven? Or am I on that broad road that's going to hell? Going to be too late when you leave out of this body. Better do it now while you're in that body. Because once your soul in your body... Ain't no more, ain't, ain't no amount of the shedding of the blood can save you no more. There's no amount of crying out can help you no more. Huh? We sit here and put on this earth so we can get prepared for heaven. This is not our permanent home. This is a place just to get us ready for heaven. But some people are setting their soul 
Quit good profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Everything down here, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, all this stuff is can be shaken. All this stuff is going to pass away. Okay, let's read the next scripture. Which one did I say? First Peter 1 and verse 5 through 7, I think. Who are kept. Who are kept. By the power of God. Who are kept by the power of God. Through faith. Through what? Faith. There is a faith that can keep us. Kept by the power of God. Through faith. There is a faith that can preserve you. Protect you. Keep you. Are you listening? Uh huh. Unto salvation. Unto salvation. Ready. Ready. To in, other, in other words, he got to endure to the end. We saved them, but yet we got to still stay in here until the last breath in our body. We got to be faithful to God. Amen. I mean, you can be faithful to God for a hundred years. You know, there's one man I heard about. He lived for God all of his life, many some odd years old. And then he's up years old, decided he wanted to go out there for a day or two and see what the world is like. And the moment he done that, he died. Can you imagine living your whole life for God and then take a day and, and, and make a bad decision and want to go out there and do something for the flesh and then die? That's why he said, the endure until the end. The same shall be saved. Uh huh. Ready to ready. be revealed in the last time. Ready to be revealed in the last time. Where ye greatly rejoice. Where ye greatly rejoice. So now for a season, if need be. I mean, you may be going through something now. You may be in a season of being tested and being tried, fighting discouragement, fighting lonesomeness, fighting this and fighting that. Go ahead. Ye are in heaviness. You are in heaviness. Temptation. Yes. That the trial of your faith. Knowing that the trial of your faith, your faith is being tried. Right now, one of you wonder what's going on. Your faith is being tried. God is allowing it to be tried to show you what we need to improve. What we need to get rid of all these hindrances. Because your faith will fail you when all hell breaks loose. If it's not genuine, if it's not if you're not rooted, grounded, settled, and established in an unshakable faith, then you will fall. Millions is going to fall. Millions, millions is going to go to hell because they wouldn't listen, they wouldn't take heed, they wouldn't pray, they wouldn't humble themselves and turn to God. And millions is going to go to hell. Go ahead. I don't mean to sound harsh, but I have to be. Firm. Yes, Go ahead. Faith being much more precious. Your faith is much more precious. Than of gold that perish. Your faith is much more precious than you going out there winning the lottery. And winning a million dollars. Your faith is more precious than a million dollars. A ten million dollars. A billion. Your faith in God is more precious than anything the world can offer you. Than any boy, or than any girl, or any material thing. Your faith is more precious. Go ahead. Though it be tried with fire. Though it be tried with fire. Might be found unto praise uh -huh. and honor and glory at the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. God help me to that, that who said. Don't have misplaced faith in the politicians. Don't have misplaced faith in man. Don't have misplaced faith in material things. Don't have misplaced faith in your retirement. Don't have misplaced faith in things that you have stored back for uh, a rainy day. All this stuff is going to be shaken. God said, as a matter of fact, God said everything going to be taken and shaken. And the only thing you're going to have left is your faith. Is it going to be in God or is it going to be in these things that can be shaken? Uh huh. Well, let's read Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 and 25. 
Therefore, therefore, whosoever hear and while he's getting that, um, one of y'all get Matthew, uh, Matthew 16 and verse 18 and 19. You get that? Uh, well, I, I can quote these scriptures, but I'd like for y'all to read them. Go ahead and read that. Therefore, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, and what? And what? Practice them. Put into action. Don't just hear, but practice. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. A lot of people got ears. Some of y'all got two ears. Some of y'all got three. Got four. But do you have an ear to hear what God is saying? What the Spirit is saying? What the Word is saying? The Spirit and the Word agree. Hear what the Word is saying. Quit hearing all this noise out there and all this other stuff does, does not help you in the day of trouble. Go ahead and read that again. Therefore, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, whosoever hear these, I mean, there's three places in the Bible over there in Matthew chapter 11 and Mark chapter 4, Revelation chapter 2, it speaks about hearing in many other places. But anytime something is mentioned two or three times, he said, let every word be established. And when it's mentioned two or three times in the scriptures, that means it's to be built upon. It's to be believed. You ought to establish your faith in it. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Quit hearing gossip. Quit hearing about the new boy that's in town or the new girl. Quit hearing about all this stuff that's not going to help you. Hear what God is saying to you young people. Hear what God is saying to you brothers and sisters because only what he says is what's going to get you through what you're going to go through. Whether it's something physically or something, uh, you know, a, a death, a, a, a disaster. We're going to all be tried. We're going to all go through something. But only hearing and receiving what God says is what's going to take us through it. You listening? Finish reading that. And do it them. And does practice what the word. It ain't do no good to come to church if you're not willing to obey the word. Practice it. Uh-huh. I will liken him unto a wise man. You hear this word? I liken it to a wise man. Which built his house upon a rock. That built his house upon a rock. And the rain. Heal your faith in something solid. Who built his house upon the rock. The rain descended. The rains descended. The floods came. The rains are coming. This summer and this fall and this winter. When I mean rains, I mean troubles is coming. In every in every phase, troubles is coming. Coming to the old, coming to the middle age, coming to the young, coming to the towns, coming to the city. It's coming in every way. It's coming. Trouble is rain. It's coming. Uh huh. And the winds blew. The winds are going to blow. Adversity is going to knock at your door. Troubles is going to come your way. Uh huh. And beat upon that house. Beat upon that house. And it fell not. But it did fall. For it was founded upon a rock. It was built upon a rock. It was built upon a rock. This church, you know, we dug. Uh, I don't know how many feet. We dug until we got the topsoil out of the way. Until we got into the clay and laid the foundation. Because you got to make sure that when you're building, you're building on something that can't shake, that can't uh, shift. Because if we build up on something weak, then these walls will be the first to sink. Would be and the roof would collapse. We had to make sure we was building on something solid. Huh? Sands of man ain't solid. Religions and sermons and all that stuff ain't solid. You got to build up on something solid, which is the word. No. Finish reading that. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, everyone that hear these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, and don't practice them, 
shall be likened unto a foolish man. Yes. Which built his house upon the sand. Thank God you, you're not built on sand or the sands of man. You're built upon the rock. I believe that's what he told us in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 and 19. Peter said, um, uh, um, Jesus asked the disciples, Who do men say that I am? Some say that John the Baptist, Jeremiah, Elijah, one of the prophets. Jesus said, Who do you say that I am? Jesus and, and, and Peter spoke up and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. We better make sure we serve the living God. You're the Son of the living God. And upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. The rock is the Word. The rock is Jesus. Ephesians 2 and 20. Uh, other foundations. I mean, 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 11. Other foundations can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2 and 20. You're built on the foundation of the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Huh? This is make sure that you're built upon the word of Isaiah, the word of Jeremiah, the word of Paul. Make sure that you're built upon the words of Jesus. He's the rock. And these men that he has raised up and we have to build. You know, Brother Charles come through here and he didn't build us on religions. He didn't build us on the sermons of man. He built us on the rock. On the solid, pure, unadulterated word of God. Didn't he? Amen. Make sure you build it on something that can't be shaken. Hallelujah. Let's read it. Over in, um, you know, uh, uh, there's a scripture over there in the book of Mark where it says, the soul went forth to sow. And it sowed forth good seed. And then it speaks about four different kinds of soil that the word fell upon. It speaks about some fell by the wayside. They were the in church right there, but they mined somewhere else. When the word came, the source sold the seed. And by the time they left church, what did they call? They forgot what they heard. And the devil come along. Because they was carnal minded, natural minded, girl minded, boy minded. Mind on what they're going to eat when they get out of church. Mind on other things. <laughs> Instead of having a mind, that was receiving the word. They had a mind on all this other stuff. Huh? That's falling by the wayside. And then he said some of the seed fell among uh, stony ground. You know what stony ground is? That's, that's hearts, that heart spirit. People that can't be touched. Hard. You know, holding on to attitudes. Holding on to unforgiveness. Holding on to bitterness. Hold, some people won't come to this church. Live out here on these ground. Won't come. Holding on to these spirits and things. The word fell among thorn, fell among stony ground. And didn't bring forth nothing because they couldn't humble themselves and let it go. Amen. And then it says the word fell among the weeds. The weeds represent the riches and all of these cares of life. And when it comes, and, and the word choked the word out because they're so caught up in all this lust of the flesh and all these cares of life, and worries and anxieties, and the word couldn't take root. And the weeds choked it out of them. The cares of life choked it out of them. The weeds, the rocks, the um, wayside, 
But it says there were some that heard the word and they cultivated their heart. They got rid of the bitterness and resentment and gossip. And they got all this stuff out of them. And they got all the cares of life out of them. And they, 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 they zero in on that word. And they prayed. And they hearts become calm come polarized. Their heart become cultivated. For the word to fall into a good ground, fell into their heart. And when the word fell into their heart, and when the spirit was poured out, the word began to grow. And the nature of Christ began to come forth. And the Bible said, faith working by love. And the faith that they had received from hearing that word, it produced that love and that love of God uh, passes. All understand that love of God what can separate you from that love? So all these things that are coming, no, because the word of God was entered into your heart and that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That word kept you from sinning, kept you from lying, kept you from stealing, kept you from cursing, kept you from listening to false doctrine, kept you from seducing the religious spirit. That word in you. I mean, if we want, now what, what I'm preaching, someone asked me, someone uh, sent a text, wanted me to preach on something about um, faith, the spirit of faith. So I want to add that in to what I'm saying, because we need faith to come alive in this, don't we? That's like, you know, there is such a thing as the gift of faith that God will, at that moment when you need it, he'll impart that gift of faith in you. For the very moment that you need it. For the very moment that you need God to rescue you. Touch you. Save you from an accident. Or whatever. You'll impart that gift. But the gift of faith can come and go. That's why he told us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We need the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. Causes faith to be alive. We need living faith. Living faith. Faith comes from life. And, and, and when the spirit of faith is in you, you go to bed, it's there. You wake up, it's there. It is living in you. It's following you. On the job, in the school, at home. That spirit of faith is in you. And when you need a healing, a miracle, a deliverance, that spirit of faith is right there to produce that deliverance, that healing, or whatever that is you need. Living faith. It's what I call. Paul told us, read on that 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I think verse 16. For which cause we faint not. For, listen to this. For which cause we faint not. For though our outward man perish. Though this outward man, yours and mine are all, you know, moving around, look slower man. Though this outward man perish. Yet the inward man is renewed. Yet the inward man, keep that spiritual man renewed. The outward man may get older. The Bible says we're all like a flower. You know, like grass. Green and lush. Like grass and like a flower. And just flat, and just uh, flourishing and just beautiful like this flower here. But eventually, the winds blow upon it, the grass withers, the flower faded away. But the word of God is never changes. It lasts forever. All the stuff that we have gave our time and our attention to, it has faded away. All this, all this little bit of lust. All this stuff fades away. But when you Give your time and attention to God. Yes. That word in you. He's going to keep you. Yes. When nations fall. When governments crumble. When communism takes over. When everything around you. You got to make sure, saints, that you don't have that. You got to make sure your faith is, 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 is in the right place. It can't be head faith. It can't be mind faith. It can't be um, 
Since knowledge faded. You know what I mean? Can't tell something, but you know, like Peter. Um, or like Thomas. When Jesus had died and was resurrected, then Thomas, um, they came to, Jesus came to the disciples. Thomas wasn't there. When Jesus came in, I don't know, walked in through the wall, or he came in through the door, I don't know, but he came in. And, and both occasions, it was something different. But he came in, and they touched his hands, and they saw it was him, and they went, and they said, the Lord is risen. Thomas said, I ain't gonna believe it until I can see it, until I can touch, until I can feel, you know, six hundred. Misplaced faith. <laughs> you know, is what you can touch, what you can smell, what you can see. These five senses. But there is a faith that we walk by. We walk not by sight, but by faith. Something you can't see, you can't smell, you can't hear, you can't touch, you can't taste, but it's come through the word. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. The kind of faith that we need to be established in that's going to build us up, that's going to put us in a solid place. It's going to have to come through the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Psalm 107 and 20. He sent his word to heal and to deliver and to set us free. And like I told you a few scriptures a minute ago, or Isaiah 40, and over there where it speaks about all flesh is grass, and all the glory of man is a flower of grass, and the flower faded, and the grass withered, but he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Build yourself in something that abides forever. Amen. Build your faith in the word. Quit worrying about relationships and all that stuff. The only relationship that last is what you have with God. Your relationship with a man or with a woman, that's temporary. Get a relationship with God. Get yourself in something that's going to take you through the storms. Take you through the hardships. Take you through what we are fixing to go through. Amen. I we read somewhere, I forgot. For which cause we faint not. This is in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7, and we go to verse 13. Read. 2 Corinthians. For we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this treasure, this treasure in earthly vessels, not in the banks, not somewhere hidden, hidden in a rock, or hidden in a safe, or hidden in a safe deposit box. But we have this treasure in earthly vessels. What's in these earthly vessels? Let's read. That the excellency of the power. That the excellency of the power may be of God. May be of God. And not of us. Not of us. We are troubled on every side. Trouble. Fix the hills from every side. You're thinking to see trouble in this nation like you've never seen. Because the wrong people is leading us. Trouble. Uh huh. Yet not distress. Yet, because we got something in us, we're, we're not stressed out about it. We're not, you know, throwing our hands up. We're not quick. Trouble on every side. But yet not distressed. Uh huh. We are perplexed. Perplexed. Confused. What am I going to do? Which way am I going to go? What's going? What's going to happen when I lose my job? What's going to happen when my health deteriorates? What's going to happen when this happens? And when my son or this, my daughter, what's going to happen? You know, God says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Go ahead. Read that again. Have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have this treasure uh -huh. in earthen vessels. In earthen vessels. Of the power. That the excellency of the power, thank God for the power. There is a hidden power. That the excellency of the power may be of God. May be of God. And not of us. Not of us. The 
trouble on every side. Trouble on every side. Yet not distressed. Yet not distressed. We are perplexed. Trouble on every side. Not distressed. Trouble. We are perplexed. But not in despair. Because perplexed. Looking at things from the natural viewpoint, and we get perplexed. Looking at how bad things are. Looking at how the nation is going down. Looking at how evil is taking over the White House. Looking at how the con our, our job situation. Looking at the inflation. Looking at you go to Walmart that you used to get something for $20. Then take your $50. We're looking, we're being perplexed by what's happening. But yet, perplexed by what? Not in despair. Not, in, not without hope. Thank God we still got hope. 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 Go ahead. Persecuted. Persecuted. But not forsaken. But not forsaken. We've been persecuted. Lied on. You know, that song when I got saved, they used to say, I've been lied on. Talked about misused, mistreated. Long as I got Jesus. Long, long, long. Long as I got King Jesus. I don't need nobody. <laughs> Y'all remember that song? Hallelujah. I don't care what the devil throw at you. As long as you got this faith in you. You anchored in it. You rooted in it. You established in it. Because the word that you heard, it didn't fall by the wayside. It didn't fall among thorns and thistles. It didn't fall among the curls of life. It didn't fall, but it fell in your heart. It went into your heart. You heard. You had a living here. And because you had a living here, you was able to understand. You was able to grasp it. You was able to receive it. And when you left out of here, you left out of here walking, obeying that word. And because you obeyed it, it become a rock. Let's, I don't know what we're in. Persecuted. Persecuted. But not forsaken. Look at how they persecuted us. Here we grieving. You know, over what happened? Through the loss of our loved ones. And people trying to seize up on that. And lie, tell all these things. But yet, still in here. We're on the rock. We're still praying. We're still in the holy. We, we need to let. These lies that come out of Facebook or come out of something, we didn't let that keep us from God or keep us from church. We didn't let them lead us astray. God, it's, it's billions of seducing spirits being turned loose on this earth right now. And if you're harboring any kind of unforgiveness, any kind of sin, then you're opening the door for that seducing spirit to come inside of you. Especially young people. Young people that's not on the right foundation. The devil has got a number. He got your number. You got to make sure you understand what I'm saying. And that you're believing it and you're practicing it. Young people are going to be deceived by the millions. Because of their, in, because of their immaturity. Because they build it on stuff rather than the word. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Cast down. Cast down but not destroyed. Cast down but not destroyed. Uh-huh. Always. Look how they put it down to Paul. They stoned him. Left him for dead. Stoned him and left him for dead. Bleeding. Tore the clothes off of him. Blood coming out of his body. Paul got back up in the midst of all of that and said, through much tribulation, we're going to get in. Right. Through much, through hardship, we're going to enter into the kingdom. Somebody said, I thought living for God, everything would be soft, everything would be good. No, the devil is mad. He don't want you to go to heaven. He's been there. He know what it's about. And he know he can't get back there. And he's jealous and he's enraged and he's mad. And all of his demons, they're mad. And they have one task, and that is to kill, to steal, and to destroy, and to keep you from where they once were. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Make sure you build it on something of faith, a living faith. Make sure this what I'm saying is not just something in your head. 
not just an emotion, but it's a spirit of faith that's living inside of me. Anybody can come here any time of the day or night and ask you something, and that spirit of faith in you will quicken you and give you wisdom. Give you answers. God neither sleeps nor slumber. You know we have to sleep, don't we? But God don't slumber. He don't sleep. He's right there watching. Why are you sleeping? He's watching. He's observing. Why are you slumbering? He's right there. He, he don't God. He don't. He don't. That's right. He don't get time. There ain't nothing. He's observing. He's watching. He's right there. A very present him. Three o'clock in the morning. Six o'clock in the morning. Hallelujah. In a time of trouble, he's there. We need an unwavering faith. An unshakable faith. A faith that's rooted, that's grounded, that's settled, that's built upon God's word. Yes, sir. Amen. Now I know this person is kind of different from me. All this stuff on Facebook. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, who I see a season of God blessing him. I see you a season, you've been going through it. I see a season of how people misunderstand you. I see a season of a, you know, telling people what they want to hear. But instead of telling them, I see a time where you need to get to God. You need to get yourself back on this foundation. I see where you need to return back to your first love. I see where you will miss God if you don't wake up. I see you don't get away from those people that's out there leading you astray. You don't want to go to hell with them. That's the kind of preaching we need. Well, Thank you, Jesus. Let's read. I better start. I think y'all have enough for today. Huh? A little more? Thank you, Jesus. Y'all have the spirit of faith. Finish. Second Corinthians 4. Finish reading that. I was 7 through 13, I think. Always bear it about. Oh, we burned about in the body. In the body. The dying of the Lord Jesus. The dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life. That the life. Also of Jesus. That the life. Also of Jesus. Might be made manifest in our body. How many want the life of Jesus? Yes. To be seen. To be demonstrated. Yes, to be manifested in your life. Yes. He's your life. Mm -hmm. Christ in you is the life. Is the light of the world. And when he's seen in you, then the world can see through that darkness, through their hate, through their confusion, through all this, they can see peace in you. They can see harmony. They can see a life that they desire. Something in you. You're the salt. You give them a, 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 a desire for you, you put a thirst in them. That's what salt does. Salt, you, you eat salt and it, and it creates a thirst in you. Well, that's what we are. We're the salt of the earth. We create a thirst in man for God. We put something in man to cause him. I want, to, I want, I want what you got. I, I've been watching you. I've been listening to you. I'm seeing your life. There's a peace in you. There's a calmness in you. There's something in you that I've been yearning for. I take, I don't have it. I have a good job, but I don't have what I see in you. I have money to make, but I don't have what I see in you. I see this and that. I want that. What they see is the life of Jesus inside of us. Come in the storm. Well, thank you, Father. Did you finish reading it? For we which live, for we which live, are always delivered. Uh huh. Unto death. Yes. For Jesus' sake. For Jesus' sake. That the life also we die out to the flesh. We die out to the world. When it comes to the world, we're dead. Huh? I don't care what you bring before a dead man. It ain't gonna move him. 
It ain't going to stir him up. It ain't going to wake him up. It ain't going to shake him up. You can bring a naked woman. It ain't going to arouse that naked dead. <laughs> you can bring something out there that the world has to someone, you know. But if they're dead, then what good is it? If you're dead, Paul said, I am crucified to the world. And the world to me, we're going to have to be dead to the world. Dead to the lust. Dead to the nudity. Dead to the perversion. Dead to the evil. Dead to all of these things that are out there. They, they, the devil comes to Jesus with all these I give to you. Jesus said, I'm dead to all of that. That don't move me. The only time we come alive is when you talk about Jesus. You talk about the word. Some of y'all come alive and talk about boys. Some of oh, come y'all. <laughs> talk about girls. Talk about stuff out there in the, in the natural. Talk about all. Then you come alive. But when you talk about Jesus, can we do something else? Can we go somewhere else? People don't want to hear what's going to bring life. What's going to, what's going to fill that voidness? What's going to fill that emptiness? It's Christ in you. That's the only hope you're going to have from here on out. Christ in you. Not all this stuff. Not all this stuff that's going to perish. That's going to fade away. But Christ living in you. Bringing you his peace. Bringing you his love. Bringing you his purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Examine yourself and see if this is what's in you. Or see if what's in you is thirsty for other things. Finish reading that. For we which live are always living under death. We which live are always living under death. For Jesus' sake. For Jesus' sake. That the life also of Jesus. That the life of Jesus. Might be made manifest. Might be made manifest. In our mortal flesh. In our mortal flesh. So then death working in us. Death Works in us. I don't want to go to that church. You can't have no fun in that church. I don't want to go to that. You can't party tonight. Party. Come on. Celebration time. You can't do none of that in that church. I want to go where I can. Huh? Well, Lord, help me. Let's read. Well, I'm stuck. But I want to read this here. You know, what I'm trying to do is uh, provoke you to seek God. Amen. For faith in God to come alive in you. I'm not trying to provoke or anger you, but I'm just trying to get you to see where your true nature, your true destiny lie in in living for God. Not in all this your stuff out there. All that stuff here today and going tomorrow. How was fresh here today and going tomorrow? Where's Michael Jackson in now? Where's Michael Jackson in now? Some of y'all didn't see that, did You got all these singers today. But what are you at? All these singers back in our day, what are you at today? What? James Brown at, you know? I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> Prince, yeah. Wrong. Prince, what are you at now? Wrong. What's Prince saying? He burned it down here. Ain't no homosexuals in heaven. Ain't no perverts in heaven. Ain't no gays in heaven. Ain't no lesbians in heaven. Huh? Don't you know there's a sale in hell for these groups of people? There are groups of people. God got a sec He got a, you know, he got a, a, a section for homosexuals, for lesbians, for bisexuals, for transgenders, for sisters. For pervert, he got a section from you know these these going around. Bible says it was in the days of Lot. What happened in the days of Lot? They had these pedophiles, yep. raping babies, mm -hmm. 
well? As it was in the days of God. Look at them. We got pedophiles today. Better be careful when you send your kids. Better be careful. The devil got these people planted everywhere. These daycare centers and everywhere else. Well, hallelujah. God, let's, you know what's going to awaken faith in you? You know what's going to awaken faith in you? I want me to tell you. Be here tonight. I tell you, first don't wake up faith in you. Right now, God is cultivating. He's cultivating that seed, making sure it's falling in the right place on good ground. Cultivating, taking the weeds out, taking the rocks out, taking the stones out, taking all the hardness out, so the seed can fall in the right place. Cause if it be a, a resurrection, He gonna raise that dead faith. You know what dead faith is? Believe it, but ain't got no actions, no obedience, nothing behind it. Just dead. Yeah, I believe, but you ain't living nothing. Yeah, I believe, but you don't pray. Yeah, I believe, but you ain't serving God. Yeah, that dead faith. We need faith to be resurrected. Resurrected. Listen on our feet. Don't stop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, God's rain our bell today. Huh? I mean, His word is, is hidden. Where's, where's anger at? Don't let it go in one end out to the other. Don't let it go in one end out to the other. Don't forget, let's get it here tonight, 7 o'clock. Get it here tonight, 7 o'clock, and we'll give you a message that's going to wake up faith in you. That's going to help you with what will the storm is out there. Storm is out there. I'm not through with this. I'm, I got a whole lot more to go on this. But you, you've got enough for right now. Come on. Let's talk to them in a few minutes. Brother uh, James. Let's pray for everybody. Please close your eyes. Go, let's reach out to God here in a few minutes. Everybody. Everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, saints. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this word this morning. Lord, you're telling us, Lord, that we're being tried. We're being put in the fire. Lord, we've been troubled. We got trouble on every side. Lord, we're distressed. But this word gives us hope. Lord, we have hope in your word. We're going to have to establish our faith and build ourselves up in this word. You said there's a shaking that's coming. Lord, we see that shaking happening even in our nation, all over the world, on the news, social media, television. God, there's a shaking that's happening. You said everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. But that which cannot be shaken is going to remain. Lord, you said we receive a kingdom that cannot be moved. God help us to receive this kingdom that we won't be moved. Lord help us to receive this word that we'll be able to stand on the other side. You said he that hear these sayings of mine, he that hear this word this morning and practices it and does what it said. Lord you said he will be like a wise man that's going to build his house upon a rock that's going to build this house. Lord, when the winds is going to blow, the floods is going to rise, the rain is descending. We see everything happening right now. We see all these storms coming in. Not just in the natural, but a spiritual storm is coming in among us. God, you're trying to wake us up. You're trying to stir us up. You're trying to get our faith to come alive. God, you said we walk by faith and not by what we see. Lord, I don't want to have a sense knowledge faith. I don't want to think I have a I got it kind of faith. Lord, I don't want to have no other faith. Lord, that's not going to help me to stand. I want this faith. Lord, to be in you that's going to come by hearing this word. God, and practicing it and doing it and praying behind it and building myself up on it. Lord, help me to be like that wise man. Help me to be like the wise virgin to get some oil in my lap. Lord, to get some extra oil. And when these winds blow, these floods arise, these storms begin to come in, all that are we able to stand? You're telling your people 
how we got to pray. We're going to have to build ourselves up on our most holy faith. He said by praying his word. Lord, like our brother was saying this morning, Lord, help us to get out of our comfort zone. Help us to learn how to weep and howl. Help us to learn how to travail. Help us to learn how to cry out. God, help us, Lord, to get out of that comfort zone. Lord, we're going to have to have some. We're going to have to learn how to dig deep. God, we're going to have to learn how to bear down and give birth to the revival that's, that's been spoken, this revival, everything that Joel has spoken, everything that Isaiah has spoken, God, everything that Jeremiah, God, and Mark and Matthew and Paul, Lord, you said we're built upon what they spoke, with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Lord, help us to build upon this word this morning. Don't let it fall upon stony ground. Don't let it fall by the wayside. Lord, when the devil come in and snatch out, Lord, but help us to build upon good ground this morning. In the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody, pray with me. Lord, we're going to have to dig deep, Lord. Help us, Lord, we want to be able to stand. Many are falling off. Many are being reprobate. Many are being turned over to strong delusions. Lord, many are going after some other type of word. But Lord, where else will we go? This is the words of eternal life. This is upon this rock. You're going to build your church. And the gates of hell is not going to prevail against it. Lord, help us to build upon this word this morning. Help us to build upon this truth this morning. Help us to build on what we heard this morning. That we might be able to stand and withstand. You say an evil day is upon us. God, we see an evil day that we're living in right now. God, we're living in the days of Lot. We're living in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. We're living in the days of perversion. Got men with men, women with women, homosexuals and lesbians and gays. Got pedophiles having sex with children. Got we in an evil day. Help your people to wake up. Cause us to be stirred. Cause us to be awake and cause us to pray. Well, that we might be kept. That we might be sealed. You said being kept, we are kept by the power of God through faith. This is a faith that's going to have to be in each and every one of us. So that we'll be able to make it through these tribulations. And we'll come to the other side having our robes made white, washed in the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus, help us this morning. Build upon this word. You say, he that had an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is speaking. Your, little, your Spirit is speaking to us to wake up, to get a hold of you. Your Spirit is speaking to us to pray, to come aside and hide ourselves in you. In the name of Jesus, help us this morning. Stir our hearts, our souls. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you thanks this morning for this word. We're not getting some old just goodies and blessings. Giving us what we want to hear, but you're giving us what we need to hear. What we need to hear. God, we got to get a hold of you. We need to hear, Lord, and we got to build up on this word. And we got to pray and seek you. Help us to be obedient and to walk softly. Lord, that warning is gone out. Help us to walk so. Come back tonight, reaching out to receive more of this king. In the name of Jesus. We love you, we thank you.